Hi, I'm Julie Rovner. I'm health policy correspondent at National Public Radio. I'm here today to demonstrate how to use one of my favorite resources, the source book from the Alliance for Health Reform. So let's get right to it. Uh, I'm going to the website, the, uh, the homepage of the Alliance for Health Reform, and you can follow along with me. If you go to the Alliance's homepage, you would click on Resources, and then Covering Health Issues, 6th Edition. Let's do that. And here comes up the table of contents. Um, I've actually been working on a Medicaid story, so why don't we click on the Medicaid chapter. Now, this is a whole lot different than, uh, than the first edition, which actually I think is still sitting on my bookshelf someplace. And one of the nice things is that you can see the last time it was updated, because these are numbers that change awfully often. Um, so this was just updated last month. Um, now, of course, they've added cute little bells and whistles. So we have uh, a video here by Diane Rowland, one of the major Medicaid experts um, from the Kaiser Family Foundation. Here's Diane talking a little bit about... The Medicaid provisions in the reform law really give, finally, the ability to provide health insurance coverage based on income instead of personal characteristics. Now you can see down One the side, the Medicaid program has covered if you don't want to listen to Diane, there's several other people talking parents, about people various things that have to do with Medicaid. But if you're a child from, uh, and of course you can also get a gastric bypass surgery. I think that's an advertised program. link, so estimated that around we're not going to listen to Diane right now. But that's one of the things. Uh, I came here uh, looking for some uh, a basic fact about Medicaid, how many people are actually on Medicaid. I wanted to make sure that Medicaid really is bigger than Medicare, one of those things that I knew, but you always like to check those facts. And indeed, first thing, Medicaid covered health and long-term care services for nearly 68 million low-income beneficiaries in March 2009. That was, that was quick and easy. That was actually what I was looking for yesterday. Um, and here's some basic background on Medicaid. Um, then here's some background on Medicaid spending, a nice handy chart. Um, I might add parenthetically this same chart, although not quite as recent, uh, appears in my book, <laughs> which also has a section on Medicaid. Um, if you scroll down a little bit further, something very useful to, to we health reporters, here's, here is a, a group of tips for health reporters. Um, First one, obviously, that one of the first things you, you learn as a health reporter, make sure you understand the difference between Medicaid and Medicare, um, obviously, when it comes to, to long-term care, but a lot of other things. This is a nice thing to, to read if, you, uh, if you're new to this subject. And here are some story ideas. And something that I'm always looking for, here are the experts. Um, and obviously, I, I know most of the Medicaid experts, but for me, I come to this because it's a place to get their phone numbers and their email addresses, which I should have at hand, but I don't always because I know that I can always find them here. And they are grouped together. Um, at the top, uh, you have the analyst advocates. These are people who don't necessarily uh, have a financial interest in these things. Um, they are followed by people in government, and you should be aware, of course, that uh, these days particularly people move in and out of government, so sometimes those uh, analyst advocates go into government and then come back out, but for the moment, these people are in government. They are followed by the stakeholders. Those are people who do have a financial interest uh, in what happens to Medicaid, and then beyond that are the end notes. It's pretty nice to have a lot of this fairly simple, easy to read stuff in one place. And again, one of the nice things about this source book is that a lot of this stuff changes pretty fast and they do a really nice job at updating it as frequently as they can and more frequently than many others. So even though it's nice to have it in book form on the shelf, it's nice to have it online where it can be updated frequently.